This review covers the Fake Out Mustang Funny Car. It's a 132 scale kit from Atlantis, number 8275. Now the body of this kit is patterned after actual funny cars. And it's 36 pieces, come molded in blue, silver, black, and clear. Now the kit features tilt-up body, a detailed interior with, as Tom called them, baloney Hemi engines, and Goodyear's Bigs and Littles with all new decals. Originally released in 72, the fake out has seen several reboxings in the 70s, but the long drought is over and now it's back. Back in 1963, the Beach Boys sang the immortal lyrics, Cause if I had a set of wings, man, I know she could fly. And after 60 years, another visionary named Tom Daniel took those words to heart and added wings to a new breed of Fords, and his fake-out Mustang funny car took flight. My heartfelt thanks go out to Atlantis for saving these molds from oblivion, and they've reissued the fake-out funny car for us to enjoy once again. Now, the fake out is just part of a four car snap kit of funny cars for beginners with a fresh new set of graphics and decals by Tom's son Kelly. And the series of four quick kits look better than ever. Now, we'll show you how to add some flair to the kit by adding some engine wiring and aftermarket decal additions. And when you're done, the finished dimensions are about six and three quarter inches long, three and a half inches wide, and one and a half inches high or three inches when she's propped up. Here are the decals for the kit and I must say uh, they really got my attention with the red white and blue theme. Uh, I didn't use quite all of the decals that are uh, on the sheet uh, but they go together uh, very well onto the kit. They come off the uh, pa backing paper very quickly uh, and um, they're just about the right thickness uh, to be able to manipulate them. Just use plenty of warm water and sometimes you'll need a little bit of setting solution to get them to conform to the body's contours. Here are the contents of the kit. As you can see it's a very simple kit. It's simplified but it has enough detail to give the uh, impression of the features and parts that are in it. It's the perfect kit for a beginner uh, as a step up from a simple uh, snap kit with stickers. Um, this has uh, snap kit uh, you know, capabilities, but uh, it also has decals. So even though it's very simple kit, you can detail it. You can show a youngster how to detail it uh, and use the um, uh, decals as an uh, you know, on-ramp to uh, better and bigger kits. Now, I, I also find that you can detail this kit and you could actually make a contest model out of it. Now I know you're laughing, but if you have a contest with box stock uh, um, categories, you could you could enter this kit. And the things that I'm going to show you that are extra are usually considered legal and, and can be done. Uh, things with uh, like a aftermarket decals and engine wiring are usually allowed. So <laughs> this kit is not out of the running. It's craftsmanship that will win that category. As you'll see through most of the pieces, um, this kit was designed 50 years ago. Uh, and so the mold design and the intent wasn't the same back then. As you see, um, you know, pin marks and, and flash, uh, they're fairly easy to clean up. And even some mold wear has, um, you know, uh, happened to some of the uh, parting line surfaces. And we show you here um, some molding issues that were inherent with this kit. Uh, there were some, um, you know, indents here that uh, are caused, uh, sinks as they're called, uh, from the bosses on the other side. So um, you, you can clean them up uh, or build the whole thing just as it is uh, with a child and just let them put it together. But I wanted to enhance it, and so I put some putty on there and then I smoothed it out with uh, successive uh, finer grits of sandpaper until there's just a film around it and the uh, the sink itself is covered. Now we'll be adding some uh, uh, primer to that later but as you see here the red line indicates the uh, parting line issue and it goes right along the, the fender edges, uh, the, the sills up there on the window and uh, right down uh, this this 
uh, area right here is the worst of the flash uh, where the arrow points um, and that just needs to be cleared, uh, cleaned off with a, uh, a hobby knife and some sanding uh, papers and uh, right down the uh, ridge there right across the front uh, of the bumper and down the spoiler. And once I had uh, cleaned up the body satisfactorily, um, uh, I decided to use a uh, sanding primer. That's a, a gray, dark gray primer. And then you can still see a slight impression there. And that will sand out uh, from the surface after you uh, do some sanding there. And then I painted the uh, model with uh, some blue that was uh, very close to the box art. Uh, because I think the color combinations of that and these great looking red, white, and blue decals are quite striking. So uh, I left the color as it uh, was intended uh, and I think it uh, will work out just fine. As I've mentioned, uh, here's that decal sheet. It's, it's a great looking sheet and I didn't use all of the decals. Uh, I did use uh, some of the smaller Atlantis decals because, well, they, they could be a sponsor for a uh, race car, I guess. So I put that right up front. Um, and uh, here the, uh, uh, the body is shown uh, fully decaled, and they uh, look just great. They go on pretty easy. You just have to uh, use a little warm water and setting solution and put those uh, into position. And the setting solution will help it, uh, you know, uh, con conform to the door panels. And in some cases, like the headlights later on, uh, to something of a round uh, nature. There are um, uh, depictions in the instructions to show you where the decals are uh, intended to go. Uh, I didn't follow all of those conventions. Uh, as you can see, I put the Mach 1 Mustang uh, script here and the Wild Mustang up front on the air dam. Uh, I thought it was a pretty neat uh, way to uh, introduce the Mustang uh, to the crowd as it's coming down the line. Uh, the one-piece frame is a, a real nice touch. Um, it did have a little bit of warpage uh, on the uh, on the left side uh, in the back with the uh, and the wheelie bar there. I just uh, put that under some uh, warm water and bent it back into position. Now I used mostly aluminum for these parts uh, uh, that you see there and flat black for the frame uh, and the wheelie bars of course were aluminum with uh, black on the wheels. The uh, seats uh, were uh, satin black and the uh, belts are green color with green snaps or uh, silver snaps and uh, there will be a little detailing on the contour but uh, on the console but not too much. Also I've added a little black wash there. You can see uh, like the uh, fuel cells they've got a little black wash to uh, highlight the, um, the raised areas. You can see here that some of the pieces have already been painted. Um, the uh, block is uh, bare metal uh, the uh, tranny is aluminum and uh, also the uh, uh, the uh, rear end uh, cap, uh, the end cover is aluminum. The uh, pulleys were highlighted with a silver pen and flat black on the belt. Um, the uh, uh, as you see the orange part there, that's the chute uh, parachute for slowing the thing down. And um, uh, there's uh, going to be just a little bit more uh, coloration here. You see the. Uh, uh, headers are a white color. Oh, and that um, uh, kind of strange thing in between the headers and the rear end pumpkin there, that'll be uh, painted aluminum as well. Here you see something that was missing for a long time from model kits. Uh, there's sidewall script on the tires. Yes, they're made out of plastic, but in some cases that, that's not so bad. Um, you, you can see it's a little bit soft, uh, but it could be picked out. Uh, but I decided to use some aftermarket uh, Goodyear um, markings uh, to put on the sidewalls. Here you can see that I had uh, put the wheels together, the big slicks in the back and the smaller ones, uh, tires in the front. But there's a big mistake here. Oops! Uh, I should not have glued them together to try and eliminate the seams. And I did that so that I could scuff these out and, and uh, make it pretty much invisible. But for the rear tires, that was a mistake. After uh, the tires had dried, uh, I decided, you know, I sanded off the uh, major uh, script sidewall markings there uh, so that the uh, decals would lay flat on them. I painted the tires flat black and then I sprayed them with a gloss coat. And then I applied the decals as you see here. Unfortunately, as you'll notice, when I went to put the, the wheels into the tires, <laughs> they don't fit. 
The reason is because these are meant to be trapped inside the wheel and that slot up at the top there where the arrow is pointing keeps those from uh, slipping so that the tires will rotate with them. So my advice here is not to do that and go ahead and uh, install the wheels into the tires first the way the instructions show you uh, and uh, then you can scuff the tires later and paint that section again by hand or mark off the face and spray it. But what to do? Well, uh, I ground it off with a uh, rotary tool and it fit just fine inside uh, and once that happened though I had to glue the wheel into position so it wouldn't turn uh, inadvertently. Uh, the, the front tires go together like conventional model kits and you can just put those together as well uh, with, no, with no issues. Now we can uh, start to look at the, uh, the, the details that go into the, uh, the chassis and frame there. As you can see here, uh, when, it's, when you first get this, it, it's, um, it's got some molded in seat belts. So I went and picked those out uh, with some green uh, pens and uh, then I went ahead and added uh, a red patch for the uh, mandatory uh, uh, <laughs> patches on there. And also uh, a little um, uh, switch uh, painting here for the console. There's only two switches on it. But uh, uh, the rest, of course, uh, is painted uh, with aluminum for the uh, entire uh, box frame there for the seating area. I also removed the um, brace there at the back end, which is meant to protect the uh, that fragile, fragile pieces at the back end of the frame. So now we can uh, uh, gather up the um, uh, rear axle there, which was painted black, uh, semi-gloss black, and the, the uh, end uh, cover, uh, which was uh, painted aluminum. Now I want you to note uh, here um, the, the rear end uh, on the axle. There's some highlighted uh, silver highlights there on some rings there. Those are locators. Uh, and so as you see them here, the locators should go inside the frame. So the frame will snap onto that axle just on the uh, outsides of those. Um, and if you need to, you can, you know, sand a little bit off to make sure that uh, you get that um, still to go in, but it snaps in well. Now note that the, um, the tires uh, have been given a, a coat of uh, flat dull coat and then the uh, wheels were installed uh, into the tires and both the uh, front and rears were uh, added onto the axles um, uh, on the frame. The uh, support for the uh, body uh, was painted aluminum and um, that will get snapped onto the frame but, uh, but uh, those tangs on the outsides will actually go inside the body to hold it in position. The um, uh, spreader uh, support there uh, slides into a couple of notches on insides of the uh, fuel cells and uh, you flip the, um, the chassis over to put that into place. Next we can construct the engine. Uh, as I mentioned the block is just uh, raw metal. These are always aftermarket uh, uh, parts and they didn't paint the engines uh, for the racers. Uh, but um, sometimes, you know, the uh, funny cars were meant for show and they were painted up. Uh, but this is a full-time racer and it's going to get about four runs for the night. So it's going to add some road grime to it too. Uh, the blower body was snapped into place there. And now we're going to add the, um, the, uh, the intake and the front cover, uh, which also has an uh, integrated um, brace. Uh, as well as the uh, pulleys and fan belts and as you can see the pulleys are um, you know steel color uh, and uh, so is the front cover and the, uh, the intake there is aluminum with uh, once again uh, some black wash to uh, sh highlight the raised portions and once again we're going to flip it upside down so that we can snap that brace uh, into the front there and the um, uh, the transmission into the rear rear end uh, pumpkin, and so the arrow points to um, the slots in the um, and brackets that are in the side of the frame where those will go. They're uh, indicated by the circles there. So you're going to just uh, move this up and over and slide it into those spots that'll snap into place, as well as uh, aligning it with the rear end uh, so that it uh, it it, it uh, joins up with that. And so now your chassis is uh, is shaping up pretty pretty nicely, and as you can see, it's all together here. 
uh, and you, you essentially have a rolling chassis. And so here's what you'll look like uh, right side up at this point. Uh, all, all of the metallic pieces, almost all of them, have had uh, some black wash on them, uh, a little track grime applied to them after a full day of racing, and um, it's um, looking pretty good, and she's coming together nicely. Next, we're going to work on the um, uh, valve covers, and as you can see here, I'm using a pin vise and a small drill to drill out the... Um, uh, holes in the valve covers for the spark plug wires. Then I'm going to add uh, a little black uh, sharpie uh, for those grommets uh, up there uh, that seal out the um, spark plug wires in on top. Because the headers were are uh, painted white, a flat white, uh, I'm just going to uh, use a sanding stick and sand off the ends so that it looks like um, you know the pipes are uh, hollow. Now we can install the uh, valve covers onto the frames that are attached to the headers and uh, put snap those into position on the engine next. Uh, each set will slide in uh, alongside of the blower there and through the middle of the um, uh, frame. Once they're in position, uh, put a little uh, back pressure on the opposite side of the motor and then snap the um, headers and the valve covers into place. And here's an overhead view uh, of your model as it uh, sits right now. It's uh, looking pretty good with the engine and the headers into position, the wheels on, and the frame all picked out. Now we can have a little fun uh, and wire the uh, Hemi engine uh, with some beading wire that's uh, found in the jewelry section of your craft store. I fashioned a magneto from some evergreen uh, tubing and um, uh, rod stock and then I uh, drilled a hole through the upper portion, the, uh, the tubing, and then I threaded the um, wires through that uh, for a makeshift um, a magneto. I, I painted the magneto yellow and the uh, stem uh, aluminum. And I uh, drilled a corresponding hole in the uh, uh, well, I'm going to call it the block, basically, above the upper right hand of the uh, uh, valve cover there to receive the magneto. I ran the right side wires behind the fan belts there and simultaneously inserted the uh, uh, magneto into that hole uh, and glued that into position with some super glue. I routed the wires to the um, furthest um, uh, spark plug hole there in the back first on each side and then worked my way forward and kind of laid them into position the way that they would have been uh, on a real engine. You can see them coming right straight down here from the valley off of the uh, manifold. A little drop of uh, super glue uh, would se secure them into position uh, right, right there at the top of the uh, spark plug hole opening. Here's a top view of our um, layout with uh, uh, the engine all wired up and ready to fire. Next we'll add the uh, steering column and the roll cage into place. The uh, steering column was basically painted um, uh, black as well uh, with some chrome spokes and of course the, uh, the uh, roll cage was black. The contrast there against uh, you know the silver tub and the uh, the engine uh, looks pretty nice too with the white hitters and the uh, uh, red orange uh, uh, valve covers there. Uh, it's looking pretty nice for a very simple uh, you know model. And uh, as I mentioned, the body prop rod was painted aluminum. And we're going to add that next, uh, and that goes onto the frame. You can see in the circles there it attaches to the frame uh, on some uh, little holes uh, that are there, little uh, brackets, uh, and it just lays down across uh, the frame. Uh, the center bar keeps it from falling all the way down. And now we're going to add the rear brace uh, to the um, back end of the body. This actually protrudes through the rear fenders. Um, uh, you'll see those uh, silver spots uh, that uh, come out there. If you haven't done so already, you can uh, paint the uh, parachute. Um, I painted it to red-orange like the headers with some black straps and a silver buckle. You can see the body upside down here. The uh, inside of most of the fiberglass bodies for funny cars were, were black or dark gray. Um, 
Well, you can also see the spreader bar there, the rear brace that's used to hinge the uh, unit. And uh, we can pop that uh, chute into place, as you see here. Also note that the, um, the tail lights were detailed with some chrome paint. And when that was dry, some uh, clear red. And uh, I made another mistake that you're going to want to avoid. You see the arrow there is pointing to the point where uh, you should uh, clip those off. It looks like uh, the sprue goes right up to the wing, but they don't. Um, um, so don't make that mistake because I had to um, use some tubing and drill into this thing and add some um, uh, support bars uh, so that I could install it into the body. And now we're going to gather these pieces. You see up in front of the car there, uh, those little blobs that were on your decal sheet, those are your headlights. Um, they go over uh, uh, the headlights that are molded in uh, to make them look more real. Now the windows fit perfectly. Uh, just snap those into position and then of course we've got our wings to add to the uh, body and as you can see here uh, the headlights are looking more realistic than before. The uh, opening uh, there for the hood scoop uh, can be uh, you know enlarged so that it looks like a live scoop uh, and of course the wings then are simply inserted into the uh, sides of the body uh, so this baby can fly and you can adjust those uh, up and down and rotate them so that you get the uh, perfect amount of lift. And now you know, the detailing here was pretty easy. Uh, I used a chrome pen on the headlights before the uh, decals were installed. I also used it to highlight the uh, chrome trim uh, around the grill and the uh, bezels around the, the uh, parking lights there. And uh, those also were then uh, after the um, you know they were that was dry. I used a little clear orange to uh, um, indicate those uh, those parts. Well, it, it's time to put it all together, and you can see the body is staged there. It's all been finished, and the uh, chassis is all ready, uh, and it's uh, looking pretty darn good. Now we're going to install the body onto the chassis, and it's uh, not uh, not a real big deal, but there are some tricks that you can use to make sure it's uh, stable and properly uh, installed. I used a sanding stick there to sand a little bit off of the inside of the hooks that uh, snap onto the spreader bar in the back so uh, to make sure that they didn't break, but still not too much so that they were loose. And then uh, you can also, when you put the, um, the, the prop rod up, just make sure that it's in a stable position. Uh, and when you drop it down, uh, be sure to make sure that you, you insert one of the uh, forward uh, supports on one side and then spread the body a little bit and then even it out so that it's nice and uh, true and uh, perpendicular and uh, to, the, to the floor, etc. Well, there you have it. Your model is complete. And no, it's not a full kit. And no, it doesn't have uh, a whole lot of extra detail. But if you do a little extra work, you can make this kit look pretty darn uh, nice. And it also makes a, a really good first kit uh, for uh, the beginning modeler who's um, going to have to get used to using decals at some point. So it's an easy build. You actually don't have to do you know any of these enhancements, but you can, as you saw here. And um, uh, a young person can simply snap it together because it's molded in color. Uh, and then just uh, work with them to learn how to use the decals. And they're actually uh, laid out pretty nicely. You see the sponsor bar there. Uh, it goes all in one piece all across the bottom. Um, and here's a, a shot of the underside of your... Uh, of your fake out and uh, once uh, you you've built one of these little kits it doesn't take long it's just like a uh, almost a one day thing um, uh, you will find that uh, it's a real nice break and you also see some Goodyear uh, decals there near the back uh, quarter and I added those from extra those are not in the kit uh, but you can do that too just like the tires uh, to bring out the personality of this model and um, once you get it into position, I hope you'll buy one and put it on your shelf. Well, I hope you like this step-by-step -step premium model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can do that by clicking on the icon on the lower right of any of our reviews. And you can find us on Facebook or our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.